through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows ekphrastic. I get drastic, hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 154. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today we're talking about that joyous occasion of when animals attack. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's pretty realistic and based on a true mm -hmm. story, and sometimes it's fictionalized. Sometimes and it's Piranha terrifying. 3DD. Yeah, and we're doing this in honor of Piranha 3DD. <laughs> yeah, Thank exactly. you for raising that up. No problem. No, Anytime, Spencer. <laughs> no, nothing we like more about uh, at the MacGuffin than uh, Double D Double. Piranhas. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering where you were going with that. I didn't have a place I was going. <laughs> okay, so, okay, yeah. good, good. Yeah. I'm glad that the empty emptiness I saw in your eyes That's wasn't wasn't because you were so ashamed of where you were going, but because there was nothing to go to. There was nothing to okay. go to. Okay, good. <laughs> Sometimes on the MacGuffin, we just make it up as we yeah, go along. Yeah, it just it fly by the seat of our pants. Yeah. We're gonna go back way back in time to get this thing started. Mm -hmm. Start off in the fictional realm, for yeah. that matter, and we're talking about King Kong, mm -hmm. the 1933 yes. version, uh, uncredited, OG. yeah, OG, <laughs> <laughs> uncredited, directed by uh, Marion C. Cooper and Ernest B. Schoendinsack. Schoendinsack. Hmm. I wonder why uncredited. Just because the 30s, maybe, maybe the di eh. directed by wasn't a huge... <laughs> well, that's that's probably true. Probably maybe they're trying to give it sort of a, um, I don't know if a documentary type mm. feel to it, where it's sort maybe of like... Maybe more this like is, a spectacle... Yeah, found footage-y mm, kind of thing, mm -hmm. you know, like this is this is a real thing. King Kong might come get you. Yeah. Who, who knows in 1933 what made the decision of billing. <laughs> yeah, and we're talking... a while. We're talking about the Fay Ray mm -hmm. classic here. Yes. You know, she gained notoriety for being the love interest, mm -hmm. I guess you'll say, of Kong. The damsel in distress. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I mean, it's it's been a while since I've seen this, and, you know, King Kong is one of those franchises that's had a long history in film. You know, there's the, the 70s version yep. with... The man in the rubber suit, man. It's and there's also the Peter Jackson CGI mm -hmm. version. I... There's something about I'm not a as as everyone knows I'm not mm -hmm. like an expert in like old films, mm -hmm. but I really do have a, an affinity for this film. I think it's kind of a beautiful story in some ways about you know this creature from beyond and this one remote island mm -hmm. that I mean even more than sort of like you know a Jurassic Park type yeah. thing where yeah. it's sort of like it just it exists on its own mm -hmm. and the world is not aware of it and it sort of speaks to you know what society does and how we ruin things yeah and i just i think that's so true in terms of anything about zoos and stuff like that it really oh, yeah. resonates in a lot of ways and it's just interesting also to think of i mean even at the 30s you know we're post world war one so the idea yes. that there would still be places in the world unvisited untapped unexplored was probably, you know... You're, you're totally right, but I even... I mean, I, that's such a big thing, to, even to this day. Think about, you know, James Cameron and his under-the-sea mm -hmm. adventures. I mean, think of how much... I think that's, un that's where they had to go, because there was nowhere else. Well, dude, Satellites had covered almost everything you else. You think about, was it like 60%, 70% of the world is water? Mm -hmm. And then you think about that so much of that ocean is unexplored. Like, I think there's tons of stuff that's still undiscovered. Oh, yeah. Have you seen I mean, that image that's like the amount of water on the yeah. earth if it's a globe compared to the earth yeah. it's like that and it's like a marble yeah i mean it's i mean atlantis has got to be like a sure thing right I mean, <laughs> we're just calling it i like, like that that's where that leads to i'm just saying it's if we're gonna atlantis, call it sure thing got gotta be like that's a where, no doubter there that's like, where it goes boom boom I, sure I, thing i just okay. i just love king kong and i, mm -hmm. I feel like you know the I mean, the puppetry of it all was just so amazingly yeah. well done, and still, it's still really engaging. Mm -hmm. Eighty years later, yeah, the stop motion or whatever the various ways they were using for the planes and everything, and the various like forced perspective with huge King Kong in the front and people screaming in yeah. the background. I mean, I, I'm a fan of King Kong. I feel bad for them. He really kind of got hosed on that whole. Yeah, but I mean, it, it also brings up an interesting theme in these movies, which is kind of this idea of. Uh, where which is more ferocious, like man or the creature? Because usually the creature oh, is, totally man. is de oh yeah definitely, but it's always shown and and made to appear like the the creature is the horrible horrible thing that's causing everything. But this is a, right in the beginning. It's no really. It's what the people that brought him here that are worse Come than on. his ferocity. Do I need to break this down for you? If we learned nothing oh. <laughs> from surviving the game. <laughs> People are the most dangerous game. Come on. Come on. 
<laughs> Moving on. Oh, iced tea. We're going to skip about 30 years into the mm -hmm. future. One of the greatest directors in the history of film, Alfred Hitchcock, yes. kind of ventured into this territory with a super realistic film. Let me tell you. The Birds. Yeah, very that, realistic. That, that stuff is creepy. That yeah. is going to happen. Watch yourself. Do you know that they found out why it happened? Why? The, the historical... Why? Because the, the, this is based on an actual right. uh, yeah, port yeah. town that received... There was, specifically in this area, a level of algae that had a certain level of toxicity in a way that when birds ate it, it gave them seizures and insanity and, like... All this, cr they found recently this like wow. testing back in the area that it came from that this resurgent that's that's come back around where they're like, oh, the last time we saw this was when all those birds attacked people. Holy crap! And then they gave it to birds, and the birds that's went ape crap. Man, ape crap. So all these birds were just S eating algae. Around Science there. is like a remarkable thing. First, I hear. Uh that the Salem witch trials were caused by some sort of bacteria on the wheat that mm. caused people to have like LSD type trips. Awesome. And now birds and algae. Yeah. Miracles of <laughs> yeah. science, I tell you. Uh, one uh, one civilization's magic is another's science. Yes. It was nominated for best effects because it was pretty awesome. Understandable. You know, it's it's creepy as heck because this is entirely plausible. Mm -hmm. Tippy Hedren was the star of Oh yes, that's right. This and was it Marnie? Mm -hmm. And it was recently, just a couple weeks ago, that she came out and claimed that Alfred Hitchcock blocked her from an Oscar or an <laughs> Oscar nomination for Marnie. Because really? Because she was not a fan of working with him, basically. She found him to be excessively right. demanding I think and I aggressive. That. And it's, I mean, I don't know if that's true or not, but. Doesn't watch even out anymore. Well, watch out, Megan Fox. You know, if you <laughs> war with Michael Bay. I'm not saying you're gonna you're missing yeah, an Oscar yeah, because yeah, of that. Yeah, Megan Fox definitely. Yeah, missed uh, missed her Oscar window. I'm with, not uh, saying. I'm just saying. You know, <laughs> don't want to piss off a big director like that because yeah. Alfred Hitchcock and Michael yeah. Bay are clearly on the same level. I I mean, it's clearly. Yeah, clearly. Clearly. <laughs> I, Send I, all your hate mail to Spencer at McGuffin Podcast. <laughs> I, I mean, you got to know she won the Golden Globe for mm -hmm. most promising newcomer. Mm -hmm. So she had a great performance. The story is phenomenal. Its reality is scary stuff. Yeah. And to see Hitchcock take on reality is like the perfect and, combination. And something about Hitchcock color films almost get me more than Hitchcock black and white films. Interesting. I think that, I don't know if it's the technicolor of the days, what mm. the pastel color choices, or mm. maybe it's just that I'm seeing now, like, digitally restored versions Probably. of the original color, but I always feel like his use of actual color, it's the same with Akira Kurosawa, where I feel like his use of color is almost more startling than what he was able to do for, with black and white. Like, his palette is so much wider, and there's so many more things. And there's just so many ominous, creepy moments. Yeah. And everybody's afraid of birds in some sense. There's a lot of sky up there, in the same sense that there's a lot of water, which we'll get to. But yeah. There's a lot of sky. You can't there's, really... a, there's a lot of sky, but I don't really worry about that so much. You cause... don't worry about birds? Have you never? Oh, I worry about uh, birds, but okay. like it's not like the deep, like where oh, I think well, there's like yeah, a okay. giant... Well, yeah. like, not like on an equal level of those two, but... It's not like a sea monster lurking out there. I think if somebody would see, you know, a giant, like... Flying spaghetti monster. If anything, it'd be an alien, and that's yeah. all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> We're going to go to the savage world of the deep. If not the penultimate animal attack movie. Probably, you know, or at least, yeah. Yeah. In the conversation <laughs> with the Steven Spielberg classic Jaws, mm -hmm. based on the book by Peter Benchley, mm -hmm. who I don't really remember who it was recently, but somebody told me the book is terrible and the film really? is much, much better. Like, there's really? all sorts of stuff Spielberg cut out of the book to make it better. Fascinating. So, there's an example of a book that is I'm going to have to read it movie. so I can, yeah. so I can Verify that. bring that to my book movie lexicon argument. You, you can take that uh, <laughs> job. <laughs> I, I, I'm good. I'm okay. really good. Glad. You can take that one for us. Take uh, taking one for the team. Yeah. Movies adapted to books, or other way around. Yes. Uh, this one, again, you know, multiple Academy Award winner. Mm -hmm. I mean, it won Best Sound, Best Film Editing, Best Music, John Williams mm -hmm. score. Yeah. So ominous mm -hmm. and sort of building up that. It's probably one of the more uh, recognizable pieces of music in Hollywood. That oh, you, absolutely, yeah. Even just, to this day. Yeah, oh, yeah. Interestingly, it was nominated for Best Picture. It did not win. Do you know it won the year? 1976. Wait, 76, so not the first Godfather? Nope. Um, no, I don't know. I'm going to give up. That one was all flew over the cuckoo's nest. Another right. bird-related film. 
All right. bump. <laughs> Zing. Uh, no, I, I'll, I'll give that one to One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. I'm going to go with Jaws. Jaws is just so awesome. Yeah, but Jaws, I don't necessarily know is Jaws' anybody... is best picture awesome. Oh, it is. I'm, <laughs> saying, I'm saying you're wrong. So many people just got upset at me right now. I'm what? Saying right. It's not. Were there Flipping life tables. or death stakes in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest? No, you're like drugged up. and blah, blah. No, Jaws, man. That, that shark ate people, dude. That he doesn't ate matter. People. He pulled those buoys <laughs> under the water. Did you not see the buoys go under the water? Oh, I saw the that buoys go awesome. under the water. <laughs> like, that is like, the, like, it is so creepy to be trapped. Like, that is like the mm. ultimate isolation trapped moment where you're being hunted by a creature. Mm. Like, like, most of the that. time, you can go away. Like, I don't know why people, like, mess with it. Go away. <laughs> yeah. That's the answer. Get out of the water. Get away Done. from the animal. <laughs> Let it be. But that one, they tried to mess with him, mm -hmm. and he was fucking them up. Mm -hmm. Sadly, they made more of them. Really unnecessary, yeah. but but fortunately, it was one of those things that all the sequels did literally so horrible that they're only ever remembered as being horrible things, not in diluting the first one. It's not yeah. like The Matrix, where people are like, oh, I wish they hadn't made the second two because it makes the first one worse. No, nobody goes back I'd after seeing him. Jaws 2 and 3, and was there a fourth? I forget. I think there was. Yeah, and, and they don't go back and go, you know, Steven Spielberg did a horrible job with Jaws. No, they're like, man, this is clearly a better movie. Well, that's part of the reasons that Spielberg wasn't involved with that, whereas, like, The Matrix was all the Wojciechowski brothers through and through. So, so we don't even screw have a good, you a good on person that. to blame. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Continuing on the Spielberg theme, we're going to drift into the realm of fantastical oh come on this is completely believable it is completely <laughs> believable just not right now yeah. oh they're working on this yeah frankly i'm working on this like if i could do this i would i learned my lesson though <laughs> jurassic park yes. 1993 we're talking dinosaurs yes when you're we're being talking attacked, my wife's worst nightmare your wor wife's worst nightmare is a dinosaur yes your wife is a You're very a lot active about imagination. <laughs> she has a deathly fear of dinosaurs. And I can understand why, and it doesn't come from something like thinking that dinosaurs were going to burst in her room at night. Was it she comes... afraid of, like, Komodo dragons or it something? Was, no, it was an experience when she was young and a holographic dinosaur exhibit at a museum, and her older brother tricking her into running around a corner where, face first, taller than her entire body, was an open T-Rex mouth. So from I, that, I'm impressed by your brother. Good work on that. That is my kind of prank, man. So from that moment on, the idea of anything that has a mouth that it open is bigger than a human to her is see here's done. here's your first problem though. That's not the one you got to fear. It's the raptors. Yeah. Those are the ones. She, she doesn't stupid. Care, she didn't care about the raptors. T Rex is stupid, man. As long as you don't move, like I learned this from Jurassic Park. You're yeah. good. She would never see. She would never learn that because she will never see this movie. See? Well, that's why if I ever go to Jurassic Park, I hope I'm with her. <laughs> Because she will Push run her away. forward and run the well, other she, direction. She, no, she'll run. <laughs> oh, yes. And the T-Rex okay. will come and eat her. And uh, I'll just stand there and be like, <laughs> fool. And while you're laughing, two raptors will flank you. Probably. <laughs> but I would be on that 30, other, 30 seconds extra to uh, enjoy myself. You know, they say when you know being chased by a T-Rex, you don't have to outrun the T-Rex. You just have to outrun the person you're with. They say that about every animal movie. <laughs> Again, much like Jaws, this won three Academy Awards. Mm -hmm. Want to take a guess on what they were? Uh, I'm going to say visual effects. Check. Uh, music? No, surprisingly. Okay, um, John Williams, you suck on that one. Uh, I'm just going to toss out something like maybe best director. No. Okay. You're thinking too thoughtful. Okay, so I need to think smaller? Yeah. Okay, let's see. Um, not supporting roles. No. Let's go with cinematography. Editing? No, I, you're I'm getting give, closer. I'm, I'm, I'm giving up. Sound. Okay. Sound, sound effects. Ah, uh, yes. Shouldn't the two have... the two classic. Yeah, uh... just from the T-Rex's uh, yell alone. That's probably like 17 different yeah, things. Or the raptors. Together. Yeah. I mean, they had to do some research and stuff to figure yeah. that out, right? Yeah. Uh, pretty awesome, though. Who mm -hmm. doesn't like dinosaurs? <laughs> I, <I'll, laughs> My wife. <laughs> I, yeah, that's true. Good point. I, I will even go, I enjoy the whole series. I'm hoping they make a four. Oh. I like two. I Lost go, World. I, I won't go that far. I like to T-Rex thing at the end, a little bit sketchy, but you know, if they'd follow the book, it would have been even better. But when it's hanging off the cliff, awesome. And the third one, who doesn't like Sam Neill coming back? Come on. Come on. As, you know, back to the books and movies, this is one of those ones that ruined me, because I read the book, then saw the first movie. Me too. They, I actually think I read the book, might even have read the sequel before the, I saw Jurassic Park the movie, or I read the sequel no. right after. And so when I saw Lost World... I was still young enough that I was like, what? This is nothing like the book. I I hate this. So I just wrote it off and I walked away. Never I, to come back. I can tell you right now, 
I, I read Jurassic Park in fourth grade. Mm -hmm. I remember this vividly mm. before the film came out. Oh, yeah. So I could see it. I don't believe you when you say you read both of them. Psh, no, I don't think they were. Don't talk, I don't think the second one was out yet. Don't talk crazy talk like that. <laughs> anyway, moving along. <laughs> we're going to go to the realm of reality again mm -hmm. and talk about the ghosts in the darkness. Yes. You raised this one. This one's yes. interesting. Talking uh, lions. Yeah. Lions killing people based on a true story. Mm -hmm. What was it set in the 1898 in Africa? Interesting. Lions yeah, the... killed 130 people over nine months. Yeah, the crazy man eaters that were out there. And, and of I course, they I... came to the white people. <laughs> <laughs> the deadliest game is white man. Yeah. Get a white man on it. Now, uh, another interesting thing about this is this is... I, I, I don't know if the type of lion was, like, endangered or anything at the time, but this is definitely more into an interesting realm of, like, a type of animal that totally exists. It's not a weird anomaly like Jaws. Sure. It's just a, a situ you have a species in an area that's causing a lot of danger, and you try to remove it. Well, it's one of those things, you know, like, was it, like, bears and stuff? Mm -hmm. That when they come into, like, populated areas, they yeah. can they can trank them and remove them as long as they don't have, like, a taste for flesh. Because mm -hmm. yeah. once they become, like, a man-eater, you got to put it down. Yeah, exactly. And it's sort of like, I think that's probably true with these lions. Yeah. That you know, once they started killing people, like mm -hmm. that, it was on. Like yeah. that's what yeah. that's what they wanted to do. And you know, I can't kind of frankly blame the lions because mm -hmm. you know we're <laughs> definitely venturing into the territory. Like, look, I feel bad for the people. Don't get me wrong, but like, there's 138 people had it coming. <laughs> there's like, there, we're we're like in their territory, yeah. man. Like, it's sort of like I heard Joe Rogan joking about you know how we should kill sharks so we can go surfing, and it's sort of like. <laughs> you know, it's funny, but you're like at the end of the day, we're going into their home. Mm -hmm. Like the sea is their home. Yeah. Like we built pools for that reason. Yeah. It's like, like if a shark put on a scuba ta tank and walked into your apartment and started fucking your shit up. Like Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Land shark. Yeah. 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 It wouldn't have its place. You would think it would be you're perfectly in your right to kill it. And uh, you would. Got to give the credit or. The, a lot of credit to the director, Stephen Hopkins. Mm. Uh, one of the most fascinating careers, I, I think. Okay. He did Predator 2. Okay. Love Nightmare Predator on Elm Street, Dream Child. Okay. That's Blown. the third one? Uh, the I think it's... Fourth one, maybe? Either, either way, continue. continue. Yeah. Uh, Blown Away, the Jeff oh, Bridges yeah. Tommy Lee Jones. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Away. Lost in Space movie. Mm. Yeah. Was he did that The Reaping happened? with... Um, what's her name from Boys Don't Cry? Oh, Hillary Swank? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so... Hmm. All over the map. Yeah. Hmm. And the film won uh, an Oscar for Best Effects. Awesome. So, kind of a common theme with these animal attacking movies yep. to win an Academy And, you know, World. Ghost in the Darkness, beside, you know, I love me some Val some pre-fat Val Kilmer. Yes. Michael Douglas is a badass, dude. Yeah. I mean, doesn't I... like badass Michael Douglas. Yeah, yeah. Or second to badass Liam Neeson, probably. Probably. Yeah. Definitely up there. Yeah. So now we're heading to Lake Placid. Put on boom. <laughs> and I'm not just talking Look at about you the made location. A destination pun. Yeah. See what he did there? Yeah, yeah. Hey, Spencer. Talking killer crocodiles now. Mm -hmm. um, one of my favorites. <laughs> uh, about crocodiles that have grown ridiculously big and are now killing people around a lake. Mm -hmm. Starring, amongst the others, the Great Bill Pullman, mm -hmm. Bridget Fonda, Oliver Platt, Brennan Gleason, and Betty White. Wow! Oh, Betty you do not. Was in Lake oh, Blossom? you don't remember? I have oh, not seen. Oh, Lake she Blossom. she was the she was the origin of the species, man. She was raising those alligators, uh, those crocodiles. Like she was the problem, not the solution. Good work, Betty yeah, White. Yeah, like they would swim up to her little toes and nibble on her toes. Oh, she she was a problem, man. She yeah. This is before she had a comeback. <laughs> don't Let call me, it a comeback. She's been here for years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. Uh, did you know this film was written by David E. Kelly? I did now. And I'm talking about, you know, Allie McBeal, uh -huh. Boston Legal, mm -hmm. The Practice, that David E. Kelly. Mm -hmm. It was also directed by Steve Miner, who, again, much like Stephen Hopkins, fascinating career. Okay. Let okay, me throw some me. stuff at you. Hit me. Friday the 13th, 2 and 3. Okay. So we're talking the origins of mm -hmm. Jason really mm -hmm. getting in there. House. The Greatest American Hero one with William Cat. Oh, okay. Okay. He did Soul Man, the incredibly racist one. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Big Bully, the Tom Arnold opus. Oh. My Father, the Hero. Classic. <laughs> Classic Gerard Depardieu. <laughs> he did the pilot for Dawson's Creek. 
Uh, you're not selling Sassy. me. Not selling me. Halloween H two O. Oh God! With t- bringing back the Kurt. <laughs> yeah. Texas Rangers. <laughs> oh. With Dylan McDermott. Yeah, that's right. Oof. And lots of other TV projects. <laughs> Fascinating. I like Fascinating. lots of other TV projects, I'm mostly because know. you know, obviously not worth mentioning. <laughs> oh, there's tons of stuff. He did some. He did some stuff. Don't don't rip on the Steve Miner man. Oh, I'm going to after that list. Yeah, oh, freaking mm, awesome, man. With mm. the exception of maybe like Soul Man and Big Bully. Like I'm on board with, with the exception of, it. of those are two pretty big swings and misses to be to accept. <laughs> Come on, you can't hit home runs every time. Sometimes singles are this good. This is a Casey at the park. He doesn't. Ichiro is a very important player, and he hits singles. Let's just leave it at that. Yeah, but Soul Man wasn't a single. Neither was Big Bully. <laughs> Soul Man was definitely a strikeout. I'll give you that. Big Bully was probably a single, maybe a bunt. <laughs> Maybe, maybe, maybe an error. <laughs> <laughs> however, however, you get on base, man, that's all that matters. You don't get home base with errors. Sure, you do. Uh, see, I obviously don't know. Sports yeah, clearly well. you don't. <laughs> we'll just stop the sports commentary yes. right here. So, well, Greg looks like before a fool. I talk about knocking touchdowns in baseball. Yeah, three points. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the realm of reality, though. Mm. We're going back to the yeah, water. Man. It's reality. It's based on truth. Oh, oh you mean specific. Yeah. I thought you meant, like, talking about movies. I'm like, all right. <laughs> <reality." laughs> uh, we're going to Open Water. Oh, man. From Chris Kentis and Laura Lau, oh. who we interviewed on this very podcast in honor of Silent House. Nice. The film that they just released. Nice. This is the story about a couple that are left behind mm-hmm. from their little tour boat, under mm-hmm. underwater scuba diving tour boat, and, uh, you know, kind of stuck in a place where some sharks kind of come and... Uh, terrifying movie. Kind of... Terrifying yeah. movie. Just so hard to watch. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard to imagine what I would do, but I imagine it would go something like this. <laughs> Uh-oh, here you go. I would find the sharpest thing I had on uh-huh. me... And kill yourself. And kill myself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel sorry for my <laughs> significant other. Let's say, you know, in this case, it's you for this okay. purpose. Okay. You would be dead because there would be chum all over the water. I'd be sorry, Greg. <laughs> You'd aim it right at me yeah. so I could have blood stains I'd take you on down my with face. Me. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take you down with me. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I would never, like, never, like, if if I wasn't rescued in, like, 30 minutes, yeah. I would immediately assume uh, oh, I'm dead. And they're out there, what, like, a, like almost a day or something? Yeah. They're out there, like, like 20 hours or yeah, some retarded something amount of time yeah. where it's, like, the next morning, the guy's going to set up his boat and yeah. finds their stuff. And yeah. it's like, oh, they're still out there. Oops. And then they begin the search. And even if they had begun the search, like, right away... Have you imagined how difficult it is to find oh, like God. somebody in the middle of the ocean? Oh, I it's bet. a needle in a needle's pile of yeah. needle haystacks. Yeah, like, yeah. It is Cause a- it's not like you have, you know. It's not like water isn't reflective, so it's not like it's not like water is reflective. You're see but like, anything. how how difficult? Like you're looking in a giant blue surface. Like it's it's like the ultimate game of Werewolf's Waldo. Exactly. Except everything yeah. looks the same. <laughs> it's trying to find the ant swimming in your swimming pool so that you can dive on. Them. Literally, and it's think about it this way: it's not even like you see like six foot a person. You see this. Yeah. This is all yeah. you see: six inches of hair. Yeah. Best case scenario. Yeah. With waves and yeah. things, you're like, is that? Is that driftwood? Nope, nope, that's a person. Yeah, and then there's stuff drifting in there. Yeah. That makes it even worse. <laughs> False positives, man. Yeah. False positives. Think about that. Also, very, very interestingly shot movie with uh, most of the camera being just bobbing along in the water with them. Well, I think when I talked to them, like, I had read the budget on IMDb was them, like, you know, 30,000 or no, 100,000, I think wow. it was what it said. But when I actually talked to them, they're like, oh, yeah, it was like more like 30,000. Like, oh, wow. it was super low budget. Like, the rest super was probably low. marketing and stuff like that and paying actors or something. They, they, there were no actors. Oh, like, yeah. That's well, why, like, that's there was, like, nobody in it. Like, yeah. basically, the entire crew was, like, them and, like, their family. Hmm. Like, it was, like, as low budget as you can get. So, yeah, that was a pretty intense one based on reality. Mm-hmm. That will mess you up. Oh. Imagine, like, Jaws, but in real life. Yeah, I, I, I can't. I guess Jaws is based on reality, too. I've, so. I've always had a horrible fear with, like, when it when you look down into water, when it gets so dark you can't see anything. So, the idea of being stuck out in there, having to tread water. Dude. Yeah, treading water. Like, like just, just being out there with no sharks. Terrifying. Already would be the most traumatizing yeah. thing that ever happened in my life. Add the idea of anything even having a chance to nibble at my feet, which I or dangling where I can't do anything. Here's what you do. Yeah. Push your Kill wife myself. in a pool. <laughs> Put some weights on her and push her in the pool. <laughs> be like, okay, honey, I'll be back to see you in an hour. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> or just swallow all the seawater and just drown. Well, just, just just go on. I troll it. Dead. <laughs> so that brings us to this Friday, mm-hmm. which is the twenty fifth. Twenty no first June first. Yes, June first. We're in June now. Woo! Woo! <laughs> and we're talking Piranha Three Double D. The sequel every to the... time, every time that's gonna make me laugh. Is, I can't do you believe have a problem with actually... Double D? I just can't believe they actually named this movie. The series is known for Piranha its Three. I don't care. I don't. I, don't, I think you I should do care. not care. I it, think you should. I don't care if it was Hooters the musical. I would still find it weird if they were like Hooters Four Double D. Oh, it's 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 interesting. It's got it's got some interesting people. It's got Ving Rhames back. Uh, it, let th- let me throw some other people at you. <laughs> Christopher Lloyd. Okay. Interesting. He doesn't Gary do Busey. Else anymore. Oh well, yeah, uh, he's insane. So David put him anywhere. David Hasselhoff. <laughs> the- Kat- Katrina Bobden. From uh, 30 Rock and yeah. Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. Uh, we got David Coker. Coker. Uh, yeah, it's a you're, weird... You're not, you're not selling me, Spencer. I'm sorry. The, the biggest I know dis- you think you are, but you're not. <laughs> the biggest disappointment is... Yeah, and this one is about the events after the events at Lake Victoria, which is, you know, um, Spring Break. No, oh, uh-huh. Which is Piranha 3D. 3D. Uh-huh. Uh, the prehistoric school of bloodthirsty piranhas make their way to a newly opened water park. So if that isn't scary <laughs> enough... Yeah. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, this is directed by a guy named God. John Gulliger. John Gulliger. Yeah, that's oh, his name. John. Oh, okay. And you know, I don't. I can't say whether he's good or not. Apparently, he's the only really other thing he's known is for a direct video horror series called Feast One Through Three. Oh God, that guy. Yeah. You've, oh, you've, you've seen Gulliger? it. Yeah, he's the. I've seen the first Feast. He was the third season of Project Greenlight with Matt Damon yes. and, and yes. Ben Affleck? Yes. And it's about patrons locked inside a bar and forced yes. to fight monsters. Judah Friedlander is in it. Really? Yeah. Wow, I'm even more interested now. It's, uh... Yeah. Let me throw you I'll just, a couple I'll just of the yeah. previous ones, though. Prana 3D, directed by Alexander Aja from High Tension. Oh, okay. Impressive. Okay. Piranha 2... Piranha Part 2 The Spawning. <laughs> James Cameron's directorial debut. Really? Feature length debut. Yeah. Really? So, it's kind of a high bar, Mr. Was, John. about the first one? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. It doesn't even matter. Yeah. It's a sequel. I'm not even sure Goddamn how, how I'm not even sure how related are, but James, ah! James Cameron, man, come on. He does he does sequels better than anyone. Think about that. Yeah, as the next two shitty Avatar movies come out. Are you kidding me? That's going to be the best. They're gonna Terminator be so 2 Aliens. Boom. <laughs> Argument over. But let us know your favorite film when animals attack. <laughs> Silenced. <laughs> At MacGuffinPodcast.com. Join us next time as we talk about Charlize Theron mm-hmm. and our honor Snow White and the Huntsman mm-hmm. and Prometheus. Yeah. Back to back weeks. Mm-hmm. Kind of on fire. Yep. And listener feedback at MacGuffinPodcast.com, mm-hmm. Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, mm-hmm. Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast, uh, phone number 333, 323, mumbles, 761 9842. Mm-hmm. We're on iTunes, we're on Blip, we're on Roku, we're on Miro. Check in at Git Glue. <laughs> You're going to pop and lock, and pop and lock your way through these. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Leave us reviews. In three double D's. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. <laughs> can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Like, don't even try to buy the same style. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.